And today I'll show you how to manage people through events with people. So first I would like to ask you a question. Why do you go to the doctor? Well first, when you're feeling sick, you're afraid or even, you want to go to the doctor to make yourself feel better, to treat the disease. Secondly, you also go to the doctors to prevent a disease, and this includes things like getting exams. And for today's talk, I'm going to be focusing on the prevention portion of the doctor's visit. Preventing a disease requires a lot of information from the patient. If you think back to your last doctor's visit, you might remember answering a long list of questions covering things like your medical history, your age, your lifestyle, and so on. So have you ever wondered why there were so many questions before you even got to see your doctor? Well, to illustrate that, we're going to be doctors for just a moment and pretend there's a patient, patient A, who comes up to you and asks you how much at risk he is at for developing breast cancer. So as a doctor, you go through her files and only find out that she is 40 years old and she's a female. Not a lot of information to go off of. And at this situation, you probably wouldn't say that she is at a high risk because you don't have any reason to believe she's at risk. But what about now? Let's now pretend that in addition to her age and her gender, you now know that she has a family history of breast cancer. Then the story becomes a little different. You might tell her that she is at risk in fact, because of her family history. So what this illustrates is that more information about the patient can really help doctors to give them more personalized, more accurate advices. So as a doctor, what kind of information would you need from your patients to make their care more personalized for them? Some of these have come up in my talk already, like age, family history, current medications, and lifestyle. But what most people don't realize and don't know about is that genetics is becoming more and more incorporated into a normal doctor's visit. Here's a real life example of how your genetics can help you prevent a disease. Angelina Jolie, a couple years ago, underwent double mastectomy, which refers to removal of breast tissues in order to reduce her risk of developing breast cancer. She was able to make this decision because her doctors looked at her genetic profile and was able to tell her that she was at risk. So with that information in mind, she went on and decided to remove her breast. And now she has very low risk of developing breast cancer. So this is a real life example of one, how looking at your genetics can really help you prevent a devastating disease and two, how this is really applicable in real life. So at this point, you might be wondering, what exactly is genetic profiling? What is genetics? What am I looking at? So in order to answer those questions, I'll be telling you a little more about what we're looking at in terms of genetics. So when people say genetic profiling, we're usually looking at some variation of DNA, which is a molecule in every cell in your body. And you can think of DNA as a recipe book. It contains instructions on how to make things. It is organized into units called genes, and you can think of these as individual recipes. And these recipes are for your cells to make proteins. And proteins are very important because they make up cells and organisms as like a building block and they are essential for our survival. So you could imagine DNA as a very important molecule that contains instructions on how to live. So let me illustrate this further with a flow chart. So you have genes which contain instructions to make a protein, which is a lot like chocolate chip cookie recipe that you follow to make chocolate chip cookies. So there are many recipes out there for chocolate chip cookies. And let's just assume that there is one called version A, 
that when you follow exactly produces really nice delicious cookies and let's also say that there is version B recipe for a cookie that is missing critical steps and have wrong information so when you follow that exactly you get burnt cookies so likewise because genes are instructions for making protein if you have faulty genes it will lead to faulty protein so version A again is the normal gene and that produces protein A which is normal version B of the gene is faulty has wrong information and as a result protein B will be faulty as well and this protein might be non-functional and if you remember back to what I said about how essential proteins are for your body and for survival if you have faulty proteins you could imagine that that will lead to some issues and in fact a lot of diseases out there are caused by faulty gene and faulty protein and these are just five of many examples of such diseases although Dr. Han wishes us to know that faulty genes and proteins can cause detrimental to human health we still don't know everything for a lot of diseases out there we don't know what faulty version of genes and proteins cause these cookies. What this means is that doctors need more genetic research and data in order to better advise the patient to give them the most personalized care that they could possibly do and this could really help them to guide them to the most accurate counsel. A successful preventive care requires two crucial type of information. One, information about your patient. Two, information about the disease. Genetics can act as a control. Genetic profiling can provide more information about the patient. Genetic research can provide more information about the disease, such as what faulty gene or protein causes that disease. With these two combined, doctors can then make more accurate assessments of the patient's health and will be able to give them better advice on how to prevent certain diseases. Patients then have the opportunity to prevent more diseases. So for both doctors and patients, knowledge is power.